welcome back on the class of introduction to solid mechanics so in the last class i have discussed about the moment area method and in the moment area method we have seen that the difference between the slope is just area of the m upon ei diagram and the difference between the deflection at any two points is the moment of area of that diagram and after that i have discussed some problems related to the moment area method so today i will discuss some more problems related to the moment area method and after that i will discuss another method to compute the slope and deflection for a determinate beam that is conjugate beam method in conjugate beam method we will see how to compute the value of slope and deflection by applying different methods or different law before i will start i request you all that if in the video if you have any problems so you can uh, send me the mail or you can also discuss on the my blogs civil engineering blogs talk to rashid.blogspot.com so let us take another problem related to the moment area method a non prismatic beam of length capital l in which load is applied as shown in the figure find out find out the slope at point a and b this is the diagram given in the question this is simply supported joint this is roller this is span is l by 3 l by 3 l by 3 moment of inertia i 2i and i and load is applied at p and here is also p this point is c this point a and b so this is the figure given in the question so if i draw the bending moment diagram so firstly i will compute the reaction so the reaction is coming ra and this one is rb and loading is symmetric so ra plus rb is equal to twice p and loading is symmetric so ra is equal to rb is equal to p so if i draw the bending moment diagram for this given beam so bending moment diagram is p into l by 3 the bending moment diagram is this the maximum bending moment is pl by 3 and the value is positive if i draw m upon ei diagram for this beam so pl by 3 ei so this value is same and after that the moment of inertia is 2 ei means pl upon 6 ei and once again it is so this is the bending moment diagram m upon ei diagram pl by 3ei this value is pl by 6ei and this value is pl by 3ei so this is m upon ei diagram and this one is bending moment diagram so so 
सो इफ आई राइट थीटा सी माइनस थीटा ए इज नथिंग बट थीटा सी माइनस थीटा ए दिस पॉइंट इज सी सो दिस पैन हेयर एल बाई थ्री प्लस एल बाई सिक्स सो एल बाई टू एंड दिस वन इज ऑल्सो एल बाई टू दिस पॉइंट इज सी दिस पॉइंट इज ए एंड दिस पॉइंट इज बी सो थीटा सी माइनस थीटा ए इज नथिंग बट एरिया ऑफ दैट डायग्राम सो वन बाई टू इंटू पी एल अपॉन थ्री आई इंटू एल बाई थ्री एरिया ऑफ द रेक्टेंगुलर पोर्शन प्लस एरिया ऑफ स्क्वायर पोर्शन पी एल अपॉन सिक्स ई आई इंटू एल बाई सिक्स हाउ आई हैव टेकन सो एरिया ऑफ दिस डायग्राम टेक सो दिस वन सो दिस इज द रेक्टेंगुलर पोर्शन सो द एरिया इज वन बाई टू इंटू पी एल अपॉन थ्री आई इंटू एल बाई थ्री प्लस दिस पोर्शन इज रेक्टेंगुलर सो रेक्टेंगुलर इज पी एल अपॉन सिक्स ई आई इंटू एल बाई सिक्स बिकॉज इंटायर स्पैन इज एल बाई थ्री सो थीटा सी माइनस थीटा ए इज नथिंग बट पी एल स्क्वायर बाई एटीन ई आई प्लस पी एल स्क्वायर बाई थर्टी सिक्स ई आई सो द वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा सी इज जीरो बिकॉज एट द सेंटर स्लोप इज जीरो थीटा ए इज थ्री पी एल स्क्वायर बाई थर्टी सिक्स ई आई सो इट इज कमिंग पी एल स्क्वायर बाई ट्वेल्व ई आई सो थीटा ए इज नथिंग बट माइनस पी एल स्क्वायर बाई ट्वेल्व ई आई निगेटिव साइन इंडिकेट्स दिस डायरेक्शन सिमिलरली थीटा बी माइनस थीटा सी इज वंस अगेन सेम थीटा बी माइनस थीटा सी दिस वन थीटा बी माइनस थीटा सी सो एरिया ऑफ दिस डायग्राम एंड एरिया ऑफ दिस डायग्राम इज सेम एज वॉट एवर वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड दैट इज वन बाई टू पी एल अपॉन थ्री ई आई इंटू एल बाई थ्री प्लस पी एल अपॉन सिक्स ई आई इंटू एल बाई सिक्स सो थीटा बी माइनस थीटा सी इज नथिंग बट पी एल स्क्वायर बाई एटीन ई आई प्लस पी एल स्क्वायर बाई थर्टी सिक्स ई आई एंड थीटा सी वैल्यू इज जीरो सो थीटा बी इज इक्वल टू पी एल स्क्वायर बाई ट्वेल्व ई आई बट द डायरेक्शन इज इन दिट डायरेक्शन सो वी हैव कंप्यूटेड द वैल्यू ऑफ स्लोप एट पॉइंट ए एंड एट पॉइंट बी एंड द मैग्नीट्यूड इज सेम बट द डायरेक्शन इज अपोजिट टू ईच अदर let us take another problem so find out find out the slope and deflection at the free end of the cantilever as shown in the figure this is cantilever beam loading is acting at the free end is capital p at a distance of l by 3 from free end is capital p and at a distance of 2l by 3 it is also capital p this one is l by 3 l by 3 l by 3 and the moment of inertia for this part is i moment of inertia is 2i and 3i so nothing you have to do just take just draw the bending moment diagram so bending moment diagram once you draw the bending moment diagram then draw m upon ei diagram and with the help of mohr's two theorems you can compute the value of slope and deflection how will you calculate the slope and deflection so let us take it is a and this is b so slope at the b 
because we have to compute slope and deflection at the free end so we can write theta b minus theta a and the slope at a is zero so theta b minus theta a is nothing but area of m upon ei diagram and theta a is zero so theta b minus theta a is nothing but area of m upon ei diagram Similarly, deflection can be computed. Delta B minus delta A is moment of area. Means area into CG. Area of M upon EI diagram and CG of at a free end. So that will give the deflection at the free end. So you have to do by yourself. This is your home assignment. Try yourself. After that, if you are unable to solve, then I will solve this. But it is very easy. So, I am telling the answer. So, answer for this question is, Theta B is coming, PL square by 3i. And deflection at free end is coming, minus 2, 3 by 108, PLQ by EI. So dear learner, today, till now I have discussed uh, some problems related to the moment area method and we have seen that how to compute the slope and deflection by moment of uh, moment area method. So in the moment area method, nothing we have to do, just draw the bending moment diagram for a given beam and after that draw the M upon EI diagram. Means if the cross section of moment of inertia is same through the entire length so m upon ei diagram is same as the bending moment diagram but if the moment of inertia is changes with the different length then m upon ei diagram will also change and once you have able to draw the m upon ei diagram so take just two points in such a way that the deflection or slope at at any one of the point is zero and the difference between that two point is area of that m upon ei diagram will give the slope at that point and moment of area means you have to compute the area and compute the cg at from at any points so difference between that two points will give the deflection so for more problems you can also attempt some standard books of the solid mechanics like Timoshenko, BC Punimia. So, I will prefer that you have, uh, you will, I will recommend that you have to attempt some question by uh, book by Timo Shenko. So, now I am going to discuss another method to compute the slope and deflection that is conjugate beam method. So, let us start another method to compute the slope and deflection that is conjugate beam method. So, conjugate beam method is nothing but this method is applicable for both prismatic and non-prismatic beam. And this method can be used to the beam with internal hinge. So, if beam contains internal hinge, then we can compute the value of slope and deflection by this method. And what is conjugate beam? So, conjugate beam is nothing, is an imaginary beam for which loading diagram is M upon EI diagram. So, whatever we have seen in the moment area method m upon ei diagram so same m upon ei diagram it will act as a loading diagram in this beam so let us point out this method is applicable applicable for prismatic and non prismatic non prismatic beam both conjugate beam is an imaginary beam for which loading diagram is m upon ei diagram for the given beam so loading diagram for conjugate beam is m upon ei diagram for the given beam 
this method this method can be used to the beam with internal hinges so this formula is applicable for such beam with have which has internal hinge also so mohr's first theorem so mohr's first theorem according to mohr's slope at any point slope at any point for a given beam is equal to the shear force at that point in the conjugate beam means shear force you have to compute the shear force for the conjugate beam and that shear force magnitude is same as the slope in the real beam so slope at any point for a given beam for a given beam is equal to the shear force shear force at that point in the conjugate b means slope at the real beam is equal to shear force in conjugate b similarly more second theorem more second theorem so deflection at any point deflection at any point in given beam is equal to the bending moment equal to the bending moment bending moment at that point at that point in conjugate b so deflection if let delta be the deflection so deflection in the real beam at that point is equal to the bending moment at the at that point in the conjugate beam so for the calculation of slope and deflection so firstly i have to draw the conjugate beam and in the conjugate beam the loading diagram is m upon d ei diagram for the real beam and in the conjugate beam the slope in the real beam is equal to the shear force in the conjugate beam means we have to compute the shear force and bending moment for the conjugate beam for a given point so shear force will be equal to the slope in the real beam at that point and bending moment in the conjugate beam is equal to the deflection in the real beam at that point note if m upon ei diagram is positive means sagging then loading loading in conjugate beam will be upward and vice versa and vice versa what i told if m upon ei diagram is positive means or sagging sagging or hogging so this is the sagging and this is the hogging so if m upon ei diagram is positive sagging then loading in conjugate beam will be upward and if the m upon ei diagram is negative means hogging so the loading will be in downward direction similarly second points if shear force 
if shear force in conjugate beam is positive then slope in given beam is positive means anti clockwise and vice versa what does it means if shear force in the conjugate beam is positive then slope in the real beam is positive that is anti clockwise i have taken positive and if the shear force in the conjugate beam is negative then slope in the real beam or given beam is negative and that is clockwise direction similarly third point if bending moment in conjugate beam conjugate beam is positive then deflection is given beam is positive positive means upward direction upward and vice versa vice versa means opposite so if bending moment in the conjugate beam is positive then deflection is given means positive means upward direction and if the bending moment in the conjugate beam is negative then deflection in the real beam or given beam is negative that is in downward direction so comparison next heading comparison between real and conjugate beam so what is the difference between the real and conjugate beam so if i take real beam and this one is conjugate what is the difference between the conjugate beam so first point if in the beam real beam the beam look likes that one end is simply supported and other end is roller support and let us it load capital p is applied at the center so if i draw the deflected shape of this diagram So th a and b. So theta a not equal to zero, but deflection is zero. Theta b not equal to zero, and deflection at b is zero, and theta c is zero. So in the conjugate beam, it will be like that. If internal hinge, sorry, internal hinge and roller support. so if theta is not equal to 0 means shear force at a not equal to 0 and deflection is 0 so moment at a is 0 similarly if theta b is not equal to 0 so shear force at b is not equal to 0 and moment at b is 0 or we can make like that similarly internal hinge or internal hinge support replaced by roller support and roller support is internal hinge shear force at a not equal to 0 moment at a is 0 shear force at b not equal to 0 moment at b is equal to 0 so in the real beam if point a is a hinge support or simply support and point b is the conjugate or roller support so in the conjugate beam simply supported is converted in the roller support and roller support is converted into simply supported in real beam we know that at the simply supported joint the def slope is not equal to 0 and deflection is 0 so in the conjugate beam 
theta is replaced by shear force at that at that point is not equal to zero and the deflection is zero so deflection in the conjugate beam that is moment so moment is zero similarly do second beam if i will take so second beam is cantilever beam in which one end is free and another end is sim fixed support so at fixed support we know theta is equal to 0 and deflection is equal to 0 if i draw a deflected shape so here theta b and delta b so delta b not equal to 0 theta b not equal to 0 so in the conjugate beam what will happen fixed support will treat as a free support and the free support will treat as a fixed support so the beam will look like this so here shear force is 0 at a and moment at a is 0 and this b a b shear force not equal to 0 and moment not equal to 0 so what will be the what will be the change in the conjugate beam so in real beam if the joint is fixed so in the in the conjugate beam that that joint will be free and if the in if in a real beam if a point is free then in the conjugate beam the uh, that point will be fixed similarly third point is the beam this is internal hinge internal hinge and this end is fixed this is internal roller and this end is free end a b c D. So in the conjugate beam, as I told you earlier that fixed support will convert it in the free support. So this support will be converted. Internal hinge will convert it into internal roller. This point A, B and internal roller will convert it into internal hinge. This is internal hinge this point is c b and at point d the this is the free end so in the conjugate beam it will be fixed fixed here is fixed so fixed fixed end converted to in conjugate beam free end free end in the real beam converted to fixed end internal hinge in the real beam is converted into internal roller and internal roller converted to internal hinge in the conjugate beam this is internal roller similarly fourth point if given beam is determinate and stable then conjugate beam is also 
determinate and stable if the given beam is determinate and stable then in conjugate beam it is also determinate and stable like example if this is roller support a b so in conjugate beam internal simply supported will converted into roller support and roller support will converted into simply support so in simply support will convert roller support simply supported or and roller support converted into simply support hinge support hinge support hinge support converted to roller support and roller support converted to hinge support fifth one if given beam is indeterminate then conjugate beam is unstable and if given beam is unstable then conjugate beam is indeterminate what i said in a given beam if the beam is in the real beam if the beam is beam is indeterminate so in the conjugate beam it is unstable and similarly if in the given beam unstable so in the conjugate beam it is indeterminate indeterminate so let us take one problem related to conjugate beam for the beam with the loading as shown in the figure find out the slope and deflection at the free end by conjugate beam method this is the loading diagram b moment of inertia is i moment of inertia is 2i this end is a fixed end is a and free end is b this span is l by 2 k by 2 the applied moment is applied at m and another applied moment is acting here so this is the diagram given in the question and we have to compute the slope and deflection at the free end by conjugate beam method so if i draw free body diagram so here 
at point B is moment is M let us take C at point C moment is M so 2M so this is 2M so if I draw the bending moment diagram for the given beam so the moment M and this is negative up to C this value is M this value is 2M 2M this value is negative this value is also negative so if I draw M upon EI diagram If I draw M upon EI diagram, so M upon EI diagram is M and the moment of inertia is I. So M upon I. This value is M upon I. Up to this. Here is moment is 2M and the moment of inertia is 2I. So 2M by 2I means M upon EI. So this is the diagram M upon EI M upon EI so this is the bending moment diagram bending moment diagram and this value is M upon EI diagram so if I draw a loading diagram in the conjugate beam so I have drawn the bending moment diagram and M upon EI diagram in the given beam and in the real beam. So if I draw the loading diagram in the conjugate beam, so what I said in the real beam, if a joint is fixed, so in the in conjugate beam that joint or that end is free. So here in the given beam, joint point A is the fixed. So in the conjugate beam, it will be free and the point B is free so in the conjugate beam it will be fixed it will be fixed it will be fixed and loading is same as the M upon EI value so M upon EI value is M upon loading diagram is M upon EI diagram so M upon EI diagram is like that so this is the this is the loading diagram and the this magnitude of load w is equal to m upon ei m upon ei so if i draw the shear force and bending moment diagram so this is the loading diagram loading diagram for conjugate beam conjugate beam this end is a this end is b so if i draw the shear force and bending moment diagram for this conjugate beam so what is our conjugate beam diagram this is the fixed end and a loading is acting like that this load is nothing but m upon a this end is a this end is b and the span is l so if i draw shear force and bending moment diagram for this conjugate beam so this is for UDL, the nature of the shear force is 1 degree and the nature for the bending moment diagram is 2 degree. So this is the shear force and the magnitude is W into L, this value. At the free end shear force is 0 
and at the fixed end W into L. So W how much magnitude? M upon EI into L. This is shear force diagram. Shear force diagram. This is loading diagram. Loading diagram for conjugate B. This value. Similarly, if I draw the bending moment diagram, so bending moment diagram, the nature of the bending moment diagram is 2 degree. We have already studied for a cantilever beam having UDL. So the maximum shear force is small w into L. Maximum bending moment is WL square by 2. And the nature of the shear force is 1 degree. So this is nature 1 degree. And the nature of the bending moment diagram is 2 degree. So this is the bending moment diagram. Value is negative. The nature of this curve is 2 degree. And how much the magnitude? WL square by 2 EI. W L square by 2 EI. So W is how much? M upon EI. So this value will come M L square by 2 EI. This is the bending moment. Bending moment diagram. So what I said? The slope in the real beam is nothing but shear force in the conjugate beam at that point so in the question we have to compute the slope at the at point b so slope slope at point b in the real beam so in the conjugate beam that will be the shear force shear force at that point in conjugate beam so slope at the free end in the given beam or real beam given slash real beam is nothing but the shear force at that point so shear force at point b is nothing but how much ml upon ei and if the value is negative Because I said if the shear force value is negative, so slope at that in the real beam is negative and it will be in clockwise direction. Similarly, deflection, deflection at point B in real beam. So deflection at point in real beam is nothing but bending moment bending moment at that point in conjugate beam so deflection in the real beam is bending moment at conjugate beam and bending moment is coming minus ml square by 2i so delta b in the real beam is negative sign indicates downward downward deflection why it is negative because bending moment is negative and if the bending moment is negative so that deflection will be in downward direction in the real So dear students, today I have discussed about the conjugate beam method and in conjugate beam method we have seen how to compute the slope and deflection. So I told you that in a real beam if a support is fixed so in the conjugate beam that support will be free and if in a real beam if a support is free then in the conjugate beam that will be fixed. Similarly if in a real beam if a support is hinge same then in the conjugate beam that will be roller support and in the real beam if a support is roller then in the conjugate beam that will be hinge support similarly in the real beam if there is an internal hinge in the beam so in the conjugate beam that will be converted into internal roller and if in a real beam 
if there is an internal roller so that will be converted the into internal hinge in the conjugate beam after that i told that m draw the bending moment diagram for a given beam and after that compute draw the m upon ei diagram and this m upon ei diagram will act as a loading diagram in the conjugate beam and if m upon ei diagram is positive then the loading diagram is in upward direction and if m upon ei diagram is negative then loading in the conjugate beam will be in downward direction similarly if shear force in the conjugate beam is positive then slope at slope in the conjugate beam will be positive that is in anti clockwise direction otherwise if shear force is negative in the real beam so slope in the conjugate beam will be negative that is clockwise direction similarly if bending moment diagram is positive in the real beam sorry conjugate beam so slope will be sorry deflection will be positive that is in upward direction and if the bending moment direction bending moment diagram in the conjugate beam is negative so the deflection in the real beam will be negative that is in downward direction after that we have seen one problem related to this conjugate beam for more updates you can visit my civil engineering blogs talk to rashid.blogspot.com so take care of your health and happy learning